wild. Yeah, that is what the animal of the brand of this car does. Hello there, monsters and men, ladies and people, and welcome to Recharging. And standing behind me is the Jaguar I-Pace. And suddenly we are switched around. But besides that, Jaguar is actually the first of Audi, BMW and Mercedes to come up with a full electric luxury SUV. Uh, it is also designed as an electric vehicle and therefore it looks a little bit different. Uh, so as you may have already noticed, the bonnet is a little bit shorter. And that is because, well, you need less components in, a, in an electric vehicle than you do in a fossil car. Under here, there is a front fruit, but it is not big. It can barely have a name because, well, it fits a charging cable and not more than that. Besides that, I quite like the look of this car. It looks aggressive. It, uh, it's different, but I like it. It looks objective. Have a look for yourself but I like it. Um, so I said the front fruit cannot have any name, but what about the boot? Let's have a look. So we're currently standing at the boot of the Jaguar. It actually has an electric tailgate, so that is quite fancy. And if we open it up, you will see a boot space of 505 liters. So that is actually quite big. If you put the rear seats down, you actually have a cargo space of 1163 liters. So yeah, this is big and practical. The normal question is, can this boot fit a human? Well, I think that is no question here. It can easily fit one. And I think if you put the rear seats down, you could probably camp in here with two humans. So what about the space in the back seats? The seat in front of me is in my typical driving position. I am one meter and 85 centimeters. And as you can see, I have loads of knee room left. I have also loads of headroom left. Um, I can shove my feet under the seat in front of me, so I sit here just perfect. Um, what if you want to sit here with three people? Well, that, you can do that just fine. And that's because the car is quite wide and there's almost no hump in the floor. So three people here will sit just fine. Um, those three people can also charge anything that they want because there are two USB sockets down here and a 12 volt socket. So what if you sit with with two people, for example, well, there is an armrest over here with two cup holders and also a little cubby where, I don't know, you can put your phone or your wallet. Just don't forget it. It is a little bit dark in here though, and that is because you have this very nice panoramic roof, but there's no cover for it. So that means it's always tinted. And also the rear windows are tinted and the back window is very small. So there's not a lot of light in here. So again, it's, it is a little bit dark. But the quality in here though is just great. Everything is soft touch, everything feels rock solid like it will last forever. Um, there are no complaints back here. And so what about the front seats then? Well, this is the place where you want to be in the Jaguar. And that is because everything is centered around the driver. Again, the build quality in here, just like in the back, everything is soft touch material. It is well put together. It feels solid. I think, again, it feels like it will last forever. Uh, what about the seats and the steering then? Well, the steering wheel is quite large and thick, so that is good. It is adjustable horizontally and vertically, and the seats give uh, a lot of support. Also a lot of side support, they really hug you. So I cannot imagine there's anyone who couldn't find a good driving position in this car. What about cubby spaces then? Well, that is not so good. The glove box here, it's not that big and I couldn't even fit a large bottle in the door pockets. Um, you have a cubby space over here, which is very large. There are also two USB ports down here, which you have to use if you want to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And there's another 12 volt socket here in the center console. And there's a little cubby under here where you can put your phone or something but it is not great the cubby spaces one thing to notice though about this interior is that there are actually three screens one in front of you for the driver the one in the upper center console which is actually your multimedia system and one in the lower center console uh, at the lower center console you have two rotary dials where you can control the temperature width of the climate control i gotta say though this car is quite expensive and i do hear the climate control running quite well it is quite noticeable and i expect more from a car of this price anyway um so you can control the temperature with these rotary dials and then up here at the little lower center console screen you have your climate control um, controls 
So you can put it on inner circulation or you can put it on or off or you can turn off the sink functionality. Um, but what if um, your climate control is just fine? You don't use it. There's actually a smart climate control system in this car and that means it will uh, detect where people are sitting in the chairs and it will only do the climate control for that particular area. Um, so what if you don't want to fiddle with that and you think it is just fine? Well then actually down here you can for example have your radio settings so I can have my navigation down here and I can still control my radio from down here or I can have my phone settings so that actually is quite nice I gotta say though this all the whole multimedia system down here it's not the most intuitive system and it is not the most responsive system uh, for example there are quite a lot of menus in here I have to swipe like a maniac um, you have a my EV setting so um, you can see here your state of charge but uh, I haven't found yet where I can for example set my charge limit um, I have I have looked I've maybe not searched enough for it but I cannot find where to put my charge limit what is good though about this infotainment system is there that there is support for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay so you can connect your phone just fine but again it is not the most intuitive and not the most responsive system in the world this car actually has a meridian sound system i never heard of it i never heard of the brand but it doesn't matter but again the same things for the climate control the car is quite expensive and i don't find the sound system that great i have heard better in less expensive cars the same thing applies to the screen in front of me. It does look quite nice though, uh, but it isn't the most responsive system or the most fancy system in the world. You can actually adjust how it looks. Um, so for example, I can only have one dial like I, like I have now, or I can have two separate. I can have the navigation in the middle. I can uh, determine what I have uh, right on the right side and on the left side of my dial. So it is quite a nice system, uh, but again, it's not the most responsive system. Um, there are fancier systems out there. So what about driving with the Jaguar I-Pace? Well, the Jaguar I-Pace actually has two motors, so it is four-wheel drive. And those two motors deliver 394 horsepower. And with those two motors, it can actually do zero to 100 in 4.8 seconds. And it has a top speed of 208 kilometers an hour. It has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. And all those things combined, in theory, it could do 400 kilometers on one state of charge but what I've tested so far the real world range is about 300 kilometers so that is not a lot what is good though is the handling of this car the steering is nice it is comfortable but not too comfortable it handles quite well it is solid as a rock on the road it is quiet I'm now doing 120 kilometers an hour kilometers an hour there's barely any road noise there are there's barely any any noise from the from the tires so it is a very re relaxing car to drive in and again it's a great steering car and the suspension is great just driving this car i love it and what i find different about this car then for example because it is as as fast as for example a tesla model 3 but for some reason uh, the way this car gives his power feels more smooth than the Tesla Model 3. The Tesla Model 3 just gives it all one time, no exceptions. And this, this car does it a little bit smoother and I like that to be honest. What I do not like though is the view to the back. The rear window is very small so the rear to the back is not great. Uh, luckily you have big mirrors and you have uh, blind spot monitoring. But again, the view to the back is not great at all. What is also not so great or what surprises me is that this car has a lot of uh, safety features. So, and it also has adaptive cruise control, there's blind spot monitoring, um, and all, most safety features that you, that you can think of. But what it, what it does not have is actually a lane keeping assist. I don't know why. I mean, it has the adaptive cruise control. It actually warns me when I leave the lane, when I hit when I hit the line, it will vibrate my steering wheel to actually steer a little bit to the left. But it, does, it cannot keep me in a lane. I mean, for a car this expensive, that's weird. Or maybe I haven't, I haven't found it in the settings, it's turned off. But 
And I also looked in, in the book and it, it doesn't have it. It doesn't have it. And I find that strange for a car <laughs> this expensive. What this car also does quite well though is one pedal driving. I mean, as soon as I lift my foot off the accelerator, the, the car will break you. And you can actually do one pedal driving with this car. Um, you can do that and that helps for efficiency, but it doesn't help for the fact that this car is thirsty. Uh, again, as I said, the real-world real world range is about 300 kilometers um, and it has, a it has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. So if you calculate that, that means this car will consume around 30 watt, watt type per kilometer. 30, that is a lot. That is really a lot. That means 30 kilowatts per 100 kilometers. But again, besides the fact that it is thirsty, <laughs> the car is fast, it handles insanely well. Um, it is quiet. It is a very good cruiser for longer distances. It really is. I mean, I, yesterday I drove hours in this car and it was so easy. It was so easy because everything goes so smoothly. So what about charging with the Jaguar I-Pace? Well, here we come, in my opinion, to one of the biggest flaws of this car. We're currently standing at an AC charger and this car only has a single phase onboard charger. So what does that mean? That means on 16 amps, it can only take 3.6 kilowatts and on 32 amps, it can only take 7.2 kilowatts. Why is that bad? Well, keep in mind that this car has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that means with the regular chargers that we have on the street here in the Netherlands, those are three phase AC chargers, but this car can only take one phase. So it can only take 3.6 kilowatts and it has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that means from zero to 100%, it will take you more than a day to charge up this car. So that means if I drive somewhere, and yes, this car is thirsty. So I will get there with probably, I drive 200 kilometers, maybe three. Um, the battery of this car is almost drained. So that means if I plug in the car over there, it will only charge maybe 30%. If I'm there for eight hours or 10 hours, it will only charge 30 to 40%. So that means you have to stop at a fast charger. So that is not ideal. And with such a large battery pack, it is mandatory in my opinion, that you have a three phase onboard charger because when it had that and you stay somewhere for three, 10 hours, a whole day, that means you can leave again with a full battery and you can't do that with this car. So you have to stop for fast charging. And again, with the thirstiness, it is a big flaw. So what about fast charging then? Well, the Jaguar i can take up to 104 kilowatts. It does that to about 30% and after that, it will slowly ramp down. Keep in mind again that this car has a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that means 104 kilowatts is not that much. And again, it will only do that to about 30% and after that it will already go slower. So that means charging from 10 to 80% will still take you about 45 minutes. And with that 80%, you can only drive at max 300 kilometers. So charging does take a long time with this car. So what do I think of the Jaguar i -Pace? Well, I'm really in doubt with this car because for example, the multimedia system isn't the best in class, but it is quiet, it is comfortable, it is big, and it is the best handling car that I have driven so far. So in that case, it seems perfect. You want to drive long distances with this car, but there comes a problem because as an EV, it is thirsty and the charging takes a long time. So therefore it is less suited for those longer distances. So if you want an EV and you want the best handling EV, this is the car for you. If you want an EV and you drive more than two to 300 kilometer on a regular basis, I would personally buy another car.